The best laid plan of mice and men often go awry. So says the poet Robert Burns. Sometimes, no matter how well planned out a project is, it doesn't go according to plan. That's exactly what happened to our squash vines. We had planted a bunch of squash vines and imagined that by this time, middle of June, it would be fully loaded with little baby squash and lush, just like our bean trellis here. That didn't happen. We'll tell you why and lessons learned along the way. Hello and welcome to the Anoli Garden. Sorry about the rain and traffic noise, but if we waited for the weather to cooperate, we'd never get anything done. This is the second take of this video. We wanted to point out really quick that we made some errors in the first one. And we want to thank our subscriber who asked just the right question to make us question ourselves so that we could figure that out. We didn't want to leave that up with bad information in it, so we went back and did a few retakes and fixed a few things, and this is the second version of that video. So if you saw this one twice, that's why. Let's go see what Daisy has to say. We built this beautiful, strong, simple trellis for our squash vines. We planted eight squash or pumpkin plants, uh, four different types and three different species. We planted two acorn squashes, two butternut squash, two uh, kaboka squash, and two seminal pumpkins. And it seems like on this particular trellis at the moment, the only one that's actually doing well is the seminal pumpkin. So what is killing our squash vines? Initially, we had thought it was just one type of pest, but we have discovered there are at least two different types of pests. The first pest is the squash vine borer. The squash vine borer moth is not typical of most moths because the squash vine borer moth is active during the day and it looks and behaves more like a wasp than moths. So they lay their eggs at the base of the plants uh, singularly and then the larva bores into the plants and starts to eat the plants from the inside out. They start off small, but the more they eat, the fatter they get and the more destruction uh, they cause to the vine. The other pest that we've discovered is the pickle worm. The pickle worm is a large moth. They're active at night. They tend to lay their eggs under the leaves and in clusters. The pickle worms attack the blossoms and the fruit, the, whereas the squash vine borrows attack the stems of the plant. So we get it on all different sides, the stem, the fruit, and the blossoms. So this is some of the fruit that has survived the vine borrows. This one was one plant, and this one was one plant. And look how cute that one is. Oh, I, I just love it. Isn't that adorable? Love it. So as I've said, we have eight different plants, four different uh, types, but three different species. The most resistant variety seems to be the Moschetta. But even though we've got two of them, the Butternut and the Seminole, the only one that is actually thriving is the Seminole Pumpkin. Every morning, we survey our squash plant to see what damage has been done. The Seminoles are doing great in comparison to the other plants. And one of the reason is because the stalk itself is very dense, so they can't really bore into the stalk itself. However, they do find a way around it and they bore into the actual blossom or buds themselves. We just found a blossom that has been bored in. Okay, so here's frass, as you can see. And then as I turn this over, you see the little stinker. There he is, he's so small, but yet they do so much damage. 
So I'm going to remove that. And because I don't want to touch it with my bare hand, I'm going to use this wood chip and I'm going to cut him in two. Sometimes we feed it to our anoles and they love it. And sometimes the color of the uh, larvae, it takes the color of what it's eating. If it's eating the actual vine itself, most of them are white, but if they're eating the, the buds, they're either green or yellowish, like this little guy here that I just squished. And as a side note, the Seminole pumpkins, the blossoms of actually all the pumpkins are edible. You could eat it raw, you could put it in soups, or you could uh, deep fry them. How do we overcome the challenge of the squash vine borer? One, either plant early or plant late. Two, plant very resistant varieties, such as the mochettas, particularly the seminal pumpkins. Three, diversify, plant in different locations and plant enough so that even if one or two uh, particular patches get attacked, you still have the others. And typically the borer lifespan lasts between four to six to eight weeks. So if you can take care of enough plants to survive that period, you'll have some produce. <laughs> so this is one example of us planting a butternut in a trellis that we designed specifically for our beans. And the beans are doing incredibly well. But even at this here, it start, they started the attack over on the tunnel and then eventually they moved in uh, to this particular trellis. We have an example of a fruit, the butternut squash here, where the stem was attacked by the vine borrow and the fruit was attacked by the pickle worm. Let's take a look at the plant itself. So I attempt to save it by burying a portion of the vine and allow it to take root. I don't know how successful that is, but notice over here the damage that the burr has done. We actually remove a fat little burrow earlier this morning and he was deep in there and he was very fat. And look at the damage. I don't know if this particular vine can recover. So this is what it did to the vine. And so here's our butternut squash. This one was attacked by the pickle worm. You can see it's got a hole here, a hole there, and a hole here. And I think it attempted here, but it didn't get to it. I think that's all so far but this vine is not going to make it because the damage to the vine itself from the boro is so devastating it's it's not going to make it we're gonna have to cut this fruit down very sad with regards to the pickle worms if you catch them early enough you can remove the pickle worms and allow the fruit to grow and thicken their skin. And once the skin uh, gets a certain amount of hardness level, it's difficult for them to bore any further into the uh, butternut squash. Our cucumbers don't have this hard skin and the pickle worms get them all the times. I guess it's another reason why they're called pickle worms. <laughs> they attack the, all the cucumber, all the cucurbit family cucumbers, squash, melons, pumpkins. So this is my Kaboka pumpkin patch. I am so excited about it. I did not expect it to do this well. So once I observed that they were dying on the arch trellis, I planted three seeds along over here. I did not expect it to get this massive. I did not expect it to produce these many pumpkins. And the kaboka is a cucurbita maxima, and it's not as resilient as the mochetta, the, as the seminal pumpkin or the butternut pumpkin, but it is doing quite well, just because I planted it in several different locations. 
Another advantage of allowing the pumpkin to spread out, not only in a different location, but allowing it to just spread is that it can actually grow roots along the vine tips. Um, it offers an additional defense against the borer so that if it gets attacked in one segment, the segment that has the root can still support the fruit on the other end. So here's an example of a vine that actually has taken root. See? There you go. The main plant actually is probably five feet, six feet away. But look, it has produced these stalks and I've just allowed it room to grow so that it can produce roots, support the pumpkins, and um, give it an additional chance of survival if one section happens to be attacked. And look at my pumpkins. Oh, I'm so happy. So it's possible to grow squash and pumpkins despite the challenges. We just have to be prepared for it, plant early or plant late, diversified, and, and plant in multiple locations. And I have hopes that this tunnel will be loaded with the Seminole pumpkins. The Seminole pumpkins is a vigorous grower and I think it will do well the rest of the summer all the way into the fall and I imagine this to be covered in greenery and fruit. If it doesn't, we also have, for the time being, we have the uh, red runner beans growing alongside here and we also have a Rangoon creeper growing to give this trellis more coverage and foliage. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.